we got this other topic that popped up on my timeline courtesy of the business techno um instagram account you should definitely check him check them out they were really you know at the forefront in terms of highlighting and exposing some of the more unscrupulous characters within the techno scene or business techno scene who were willing to kind of put everyone's health at risk at the peak of the pandemic and go and do these play graves obviously the perception around play graves has changed somewhat over the over the you know months and years that preceded it but overall it was good to get an insight into kind of seeing you know the shittiness levels of some of these big djs so that you weren't really kind of pinning your hat on the fact of them being good human beings and you're just maybe following them as a dj right you're a fan of what they do in terms of their artistry but you're not fooling or kidding yourselves that these are actually nice people that you'd want to hang out with you know what i mean outside of them playing a set like that's it it should just end i've always said i've always said i've come to the conclusion even myself because i used to sometimes be that person who'd kind of fan out at these type of people it's especially once you start djing yourself and once you start maybe promoting your own events it, it really demystifies djing because i've always said it's the it's the kind of lowest bar of entry to make it in the music industry because it's not really an instrument it's really easy to learn and with the modern technology out there you don't really need to be technically proficient to get anywhere in DJing you just need to be I would say hardworking, persistent maybe have some sort of um, gimmick or stick that you can use to your advantage work your ass off of course network all that stuff and you can get there but in terms of the ability to play other people's music in loud spaces and whatnot the barrier for entry is super super low and maybe because of that it kind of creates some monsters some level of entitlement because everybody in there deep down knows that the job anyone could do it's similar to like fashion industry the fashion industry i've always said is full of cunts because for the most part outside of the actual designers who make the clothing that goes on a runway and some of the people who work behind the scenes to make or to produce and manufacture the clothing everyone else is replaceable you could find somebody on instagram or on twitter who could do a styling job for most of these big brands out there if they were given the, the time to learn and to basically you know have the right people around them you could give the right person on twitter and instagram the possibility to write for vogue magazine or these kind of places and they would do a pretty decent job if they were given the access to go to these shows and access to talk to these designers and all that malarkey like it's not that hard to do so maybe most of the people that you'd meet in fashion who are cunts like the you know like i said like the writers like some of the stylist people like you know you know all the all the kind of middlemen type people are cunts because they know deep down that oh anyone could take my job and maybe that's why some djs come across like that too maybe that's the reason there's an interesting story that kind of happened over the weekend that might illustrate more of what i said and also might throw up some interesting questions in terms of how this person conducts themselves so this was a post that business techno obviously highlighted to me and it was regarding this dj called bambi who had been called in last minute to support the blessed madonna formerly known as the black madonna and as i posted on the title of this image is the blessed madonna racist or a cunt are two distinct things here because i've got the feeling this story just proves that she's probably more of a cunt and a shitty person as opposed to a racist but maybe you guys have a different interpretation on it so let's read through the story so this is a screenshot taken from bambi's instagram account her instagram account is bam underscore bii so it says as follows while i usually opt out of sharing explicitly online last night was such a literal microcosm of the larger issues faced by black women in electronic music, I feel I have to be transparent. Three days ago, I was offered a booking for a DJ producer friend, uh, so for a DJ such producer Fred Again's team to play alongside him and notable white techno house DJ Bless Madonna. And like I just said, notable white techno house DJ Bless Madonna. I would say she's more house than techno, but anyway, that's my order it goes in. Formerly known as the Black Madonna. By the way, until the petition was circulated for her to change her name, which was, again, a bit of a faux pas in that regard, but I can understand why she's hesitant to change her name, but in terms of what was going on in society at that time, waiting for a petition to change it was a bit mad. But anyway, we move. I accepted the gig and the promotional material with my name on it shared um, on it. Uh, uh, sorry, and, and promotional material with my name on it was shared publicly. The day of, I was notified by the organizers that my set was at 2 a.m. and that the event would shut promptly. So it would shut completely at 3 a.m. 
After driving out nearly an hour to the venue, I arrived, approached the DJ booth to check in. Immediately, I was stopped by Fred's manager, who told me I would instead be playing at 2.30 or even at 3 a.m., even though she was told the event was going to close at 3 a.m. Um, even, even though he informed another DJ the venue would death shut at 3 a.m. So she's getting mucked about a bit here. When I went to check in with the venue, they confirmed that 3 a.m. shut-in time. When I approached the booth again, I tried to directly ask both Fred and Bless Madonna my set time and they literally ignored me and then began to rudely address me saying different times with clearly no intention of letting me play to what was now a very big crowd. Because again, it's the end time, peak time. And I'm assuming she's also saying in this kind of without saying that she also brought a bit of a crowd down there too. So they're coming to see me. There's people there obviously enjoying your set, but let me play. I left frustrated and then returned a third time. After ignoring my several attempts to speak, Fred suggested I just not play at all, despite me being booked by his team. It's, it's a simple concept that is unethical to book me use my name on promotional materials and then deliberately deny me the same opportunity as everyone else but as uh, the only black woman on the bill being blocked from performing by two white privileged artists becomes so racist i think that's a bit of a stretch but i get where she's coming from it wasn't until the support of several of my friends i spoke to um several staff and broke down how obviously problematic and racist the situation was that i was permitted to play for 45 minutes so it was only until that she decided to scream racism that finally they acquiesced and said you know what maybe you've got a point literally this shit is abc's it's crazy to be in an era where we all know the black origins of dance music but white people still resort to racist gatekeeping tactics to disregard black women in this realm it feels important for me to share this because on the principle of the fact that i know so many women in general and particularly black women are experiencing similar treatment or worse in music, poor conduct is normalized via whiteness, patriarchy or fame. I'm really in, in, invested in shutting that down. I'm not letting anyone make me feel like an outsider in a sound or a culture that's inherently mine to express. The problem with that though, the end bit, is that there are so many people out there willing to take that level of abuse and disrespect with a smile that it's pretty much impossible to change. Pretty much. Because it's ingrained in it. Do you know what I mean? From the way that agents act, books, bookers act, venue managers act, you know, door guys sometimes act. There is that sense of super, I wouldn't say superiority, but gatekeeping, whatever it is, you know, we decide your dreams, we decide if you make it or not. That is pretty much impossible for somebody to come in on their own, even with a small collective to change things, because as soon as somebody gets opportunity to play somewhere, they'll suddenly forget all of these experiences they've had. Because this sounds to me like something that I went through coming up, DJ myself, where you just get mucked about because you're no one in the eyes of the person that booked you. You're not somebody well known. You're maybe not as big as DJs, ever people on the bill. You may be on that well known to them personally. All these things can affect the way that they treat you. And the way that you maybe respond to it can also maybe affect your future possibilities to get more bookings. So you have to put up with a lot more bullshit in order to get more bookings. But then your pride and your ego will suffer along the way because you'll be treated like absolute shit. So it's a, it's, a, it's a mad one to kind of get through your head. Hey all, I, I just want to say I appreciate everyone's kind messages and insight. It's important that we treat this dynamic like it's everybody's problem. Getting the most horrible messages about being playing the race card and now being called names LOL. Let's be but let me be clear. I've told you at three times uh, over Asia once. I am familiar with being the only black person on the bill, dealing with promoters and DJs and audiences that have rarely come into contact with black people. I'm not overly I'm not overly sensitive nor have i ever called anyone out by their name online before to go back to the title of this of this post and what i wanted to talk about is this madonna a racist or a cunt i think this is more cunty than it is racist i think there's a lot of kind of layers to this going through like i said before as i've become a dj myself i've dealt with issues when you're coming up and you're trying to make your name where people just don't treat you with any respect. Sometimes you get denied entry at the door because they don't believe you're the DJ, your name's not on the list, and even if it's on the list, they kind of give you hassle to get in. That could be, again, based on who I am, based on my color, based on my age, whatever it may be, but most of it, I would say, has to do with the fact that I'm just not known. As soon as you're known, because I've, I've, I've seen what happens when somebody that is known says that you're cool and how everyone changes. And I know that 
it's not a race thing because it was a race thing it wouldn't matter what someone says you're still going to spit in my face but the fact that people change and legitimately show you their asshole and tell you to go raw dog shows me that it's mostly just an image thing a clout thing which is annoying but it kind of is what it is and you have to play it to your advantage in some way so I've got denied at the door in when I was booked online, booked to go there. I've had things where you go to arrive to go play, you do your set, and at the end of the gig, the DJ then sudden sorry, the promoter suddenly disappears and refuses to or or kind of ref, just simply outright refuses to pay you. You know, DJs that you're meant to be playing after, because they're bigger, they decide to go over the time and you don't get to play for long. Crazy shit like that happens on a continual basis. And just in general, the idea that you because I I felt that especially at the time when I was coming up, there was a period in time where I was always the one being called to do last minute fillings and after a moment especially when you do a couple and you smash it and you do a good job and everyone says oh you do really well we're impressed we're going to keep you contact with you da, da, da. but they keep asking you to do last minute things it can sometimes get a little bit annoying like why don't you give me an actual slot ahead of time so I can actually prove myself on the main stage instead of always coming in as a last minute cover for somebody when they get too smashed or they can't or they miss their flight or something. Book me as an actual person. But, you know, it's something you have to go through and something you have to decide how much you're willing to put up with in order to kind of get to your dream. Everyone's got a different, everyone's got a different threshold that they're willing to kind of abide by, unfortunately, which means it's hard to get people to kind of band around and make some collective change going through. Then on top of this, with this kind of particular issue, I looked at the girl's Instagram who's the dj who's, who's who's complaining about this and she's a very attractive black girl also very slim also very stylish and also has a from what you can tell online again don't know much about her has a very outgoing personality i would imagine part of the reason why this went this way at the time that she went there was because bless madonna maybe just felt really inadequate inferior maybe felt some way that that lady came up and tried to DJ and wanted to DJ at the same booth. Do you know what I mean? There was some level of like hate in there because of, you know, how much of a larger woman that she is and that whole self-consciousness that comes up in it because whenever you look at Bless Madonna's flipping Instagram or you look at comments in the YouTube or her live stream, the thing people always talk about is her mixing style and maybe her weight. It's a kind of common thing that goes up or she's ugly or whatever it may be. So I'm sure those cons those comments will get to you after a while wow, and it's something that you're obviously gonna have to deal with, battle with, especially it being an image thing DJ nowadays, right? It's less about the music, less about what, how you play and less about the digging and all that stuff. It's mostly about an image well i'm not saying mostly but image does play a big role in it so it wouldn't surprise me if part of the reason why she was such a cunt to this girl was because of what that girl looked like because something tells me if that girl was also fat i don't think she'd have the same issue that's the problem and again that speaks to a larger problem overall that's probably the reason why people were latched onto the likes of peggy Goo and all those guys and all those girls so when they came through like Amelia lens and all these people right you think of the SPF DJs, the VTSs and stuff. All these people came through at the same time, even, what's her name? I forgot the other one I was mentioning, but all those females that came through at the same time, maybe people latched onto them so quickly and they became so famous so fast because partners were just desperate for something new. They just kept saying the same old tired faces again and again and again. And after a while, it gets boring. So just seeing somebody fresh that looks completely different, it just reinvigorates you. But it took somebody to step aside or maybe to open the, or to leave the door ajar as they were walking through to allow those people to have a chance to get in as well. Uh, but I don't know how that changes because it feels like, you know, from the way they act, DJing or being involved in the dance music scene must be one of the best jobs in the world because they don't want to let it go. They don't want to let people have chances. They don't want to bring you in. You know, they book you for a gig. They let you They let you arrive there and you have to play a 45 minute set. By the time you're setting up and plugging in your flipping USBs and your headphones and the person's playing their last tune, that's already 40 minutes. Like it's an absolute piss take in that regard. It happens so often though. I've, I've had it happen to me where you, you're meant to be playing an hour and now you're playing 30 minutes. You're meant to be playing two, now you're playing one hour and a half because the person's went over time you don't get in because they don't have your name on listen because the party's going on you can't call the promoter to come get you in loads of really dumb embarrassing things that don't make any sense that should be dealt with before you get there in a professional manner don't get dealt with and then you end up having to you know fucking fiddle with your balls outside as you're waiting to kind of get in with all your bags packed and stuff it's absolute piss take but i would say it's more of a, a reason or more of an example of the blessed madonna being a cunt than it is her, her being racist but maybe i'm not looking at it the right way so if you guys have read that story and you think differently i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it leave me a comment down below and let me know